Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. Joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio Program today is a wonderful guest who's been on the program before who's going to be talking about how you can mend your net and find healing. That is the net of our families. Many times there are probably a lot of you listeners out there who grew up in a situation that might have seemed rather dysfunctional and distraught. We're going to be talking about how you can uh, create a space where you can find healing and move past all those things by repatterning the past to heal the future. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest who has written the book Mending the Net, and today we're going to be talking about mending the dysfunctional family. I'd like to welcome Kate Moyer to the Beyond 50 radio program today. Kate, how are you? I'm great, and how are you today, Daniel? I'm doing pretty well here. Now, you're known as a householder. What exactly is that? A householder is actually someone who holds the space of the home, and I am expanding the uh, definition of what a householder is to mean holding the sacred space of the home. So that is someone who works within that home the confines within the group of the family or even if it's oneself. And it's a very honorable profession <laughs> to, to have. Now, what got you involved in doing this for people who are looking to heal within the family unit? Um, I was uh, guided to uh, do some of my own personal healing on my for my because I grew up in a dysfunctional alcoholic family and my desire and goal was to take the knowledge that I had gained from doing my healing to help others that had grown up in dysfunctional families and to help others have a path and know that it is possible and that there are some ways and methods that they can follow to help clear and clean themselves and become wholer and healthier. Now, tell us, you know, this is really interesting because you consider, well, let's just say someone listening to the program today and they think back on their family and realize, well, you know, maybe there's some truth to this, but it's probably a difficult aspect for me to think that there's a way to heal through this. In other words, kind of go back perhaps to the family, the idea is, well, they were dysfunctional and you know, I'm okay, but for some reason i got to feel that there is a reason to work this all out. But there are what are known as family rules. Tell us about that. Uh, f- family rules um, are things that we grow up with in our household. And Sometimes those rules are not spoken or even not looked at, but you know as a child what the expectations of the parents are on you. And if it is possible to take a look at your rules and gain awareness, Mm -hmm. then it's possible to see if one needs to do some healing on the rules. There are some healthy rules. There are some really great rules that families have, which is that you have the right to have love be there for you and you have the right to have, to be encouraged, and you f- you feel emotional support within your family group. And that's one of the positive, healthy family rules, that if you speak your feelings, that they are validated, that it is okay to be different from each other. And that, for example, a rule might be that there's there is no name-calling, there's not devaluing each other, there's a healthy rule of that there that the individuals in the group can feel that there's a safety within that family. And then the flip side of an unhealthy rule would be that you can't talk about anything that's negative that you see in the family. That you can't talk about your family or share what you've observed outside of the family. That's called a closed system in effect. And that's when children grow up learning that they aren't supposed to talk about it, they're not supposed to become aware, they're not supposed to feel. And sometimes children don't even know that those are the rules that are around them. They just know that they shouldn't do certain things. You know, that sometimes gets skewered and complicated when you realize that, well, a lot of times 
parents are raising their children the same way in many ways, in fact, the way that their parents raised them. Do you help people kind of take a look at that and move beyond that to see what, you know, clear roles and emotional boundaries can be? Yes. Um, in my workshops, actually, Daniel, what uh, the focus is is to examine some of these issues that come up in families so that individuals can take a look at whether they felt that their roles were healthy or not healthy, and also to take a look at the boundaries inside of the family. And so there's often an opportunity for individuals to go back to a past event and heal that past event and change the outcome, and we do that through meditative exercises. And some of that is explained in my book. There is a real power, though, in doing it in a group setting with others and to do some sharing with that. So it is, it, um, I actually like to refer to it as a little bit of time travel where um, it's learning how to heal the past and heal an event in the past and that, in effect, heals yourself in your present. And then that can heal yourself for going forward into the future. Now, it's pretty fascinating to think uh, that, you know, there are rules, for instance, as we were talking about just a moment ago, uh, that can be destructive and healthy and wholesome, things like that. Give us an idea of what some of those are and how you actually help to effect change. You know, is it that someone steps forward and says, I would kind of like to go back to my family, but it seems like they're all kind of nuts. I just wanted a break, but, you know, maybe it's time to see about how to uh, reconcile this whole situation here. Uh, How does this all work? My belief, Daniel, is that first one needs to gain strength and knowledge of one's own boundaries because if if one has grown up in a dysfunctional family, it, it might border on the level of being toxic, for example, so if that's the case, then the individual probably should, the uh, adult, the individual should probably not be removed from that toxic situation and not try and go back and heal it and really work on healing his or her own self first. And so the, the first part would be to strengthen boundaries by having a visual idea of what one's boundaries are and then after understanding and establishing stronger boundaries, then to take a look at some of the rules that he or her heard as a child. And to, one of the biggest ones that can grow up, that children can grow up with is the idea of there's not talking. And that can be not sharing. So that by sitting and looking at that rule and hearing others, then the individual can start part of the healing process. Mm -hmm. Does it seem like it's something that might be long and difficult or, you know, is it something that becomes very profound and and settling, I guess? Awareness happens on... um, at the appropriate level that the individual can manage. And if there, if an individual starts becoming a, aware that there were some very negative rules that uh, he or she grew up with and wants to change them, then that's the first step. And then the next step is having the intention to change those negative rules to something positive, to positive rules. And once the intention is made, then the action plan can be put into place. So that can be a fairly quick process. It can. It, I, I hesitate to say that an action plan can be put into place overnight, but I think that an intention can happen in a moment, in a flash. And it can come with a flash of awareness. One of the uh, very difficult rules that, one can grow up with in a dysfunctional family is the do not feel. And that is one that may take someone a bit of time to understand and 
to go inside to say, well, how do I really feel about this? Because in a fairly dysfunctional, toxic situation, one doesn't want to feel because it is too scary. And it, um, if you don't know how you feel, then you don't know if what, you're, what is going on around you is good or bad. And so those are all parts of the steps of becoming aware of you as an individual to be able to go and to take care of your own healing. Now, let's talk about generational and intergenerational shifts to help people cope, for instance. Um, <clears throat> generational shifts are part of that becoming uh, aware. And when we when we start looking at our family rules, such as don't talk or don't embarrass me or always be good and always behave, and one actually is able to be around grandparents or understand that the grandparents have actually pass down some of those rules to the parents. That's what a generational pass down is. And when we're able to have the awareness that the negative rules are not to be passed on, then it that is when one can take have the intention to change that rule to a positive rule, which is that feelings are honored in the family group and that there is a safety inside of the family group and that it is okay to be who you are. Mm -hmm. The uh, generational shift is also done on an energetic level and not necessarily a genetic level. We are, our genes are passed down to us and also some of the energy within the family field is passed down to us. And so it is possible through intention and uh, positive thoughts to change your energetic field. You know, it seems so daunting when you think about, for instance, a listener out there who's uh, hearing this today, and they might have someone in their family who seems very dominating. I'm, I'm, and the reason I'm saying this is that there is a friend of mine, you know, who does or likes to work in the healing arts and, she has an older sister, and apparently there's a mother who is uh, who's ill, and uh, this older sister seems to be very dominating when uh, she would go in to try to see, well, what is it that I can do to help out in this situation? Seems to be kind of bullying, and you know, nothing that this uh, uh, that she does seems to be right, you know, and this is something that's been going on for quite a long time in their relationship. You kind of wonder, you know, how do you, I guess, heal so that you can move on and not worry so much about what that other person thinks, especially when you think, you know, that it's a family member because families can be very strong and, you know, and how they influence, you know, what you think and you feel in your behaviors. Yes, I, I, I agree that the family unit can be incredibly strong and that it can make for some, we, we get we can get really twi twisted up in our emotions about how we feel about family and how we want to be because it is the first social structure that we are born into that we're learning to navigate. And what y you're explaining to me is a, a friend, if I can understand it, who has a, an overbearing sister and she wants to take care of an elderly parent. Right. And the sister is telling her how to be. And... She is not necessarily agreeing with what the sister's stance is, and yet she doesn't want to say no to the sister because then the sister will be mean to her. I, I don't know if I'm totally getting this. but um, And what, what comes to my mind is that it, it that really is a boundary issue mm -hmm. for your friend, that for her to... Because she and her sister are grown-ups now and they're not living inside of the past family dysfunction, but some of that past family dysfunction is leaking into their present relationship. So for your friend to be able to visualize during a meditation what her boundary looks like 
then she would, and, and this is the alchemic um, visualization part, whatever, whatever is above is so below, whatever is within is so without. So if we are able to view our personal boundaries in the spirit world, we are able to strengthen those. We can honor those and strengthen them in the outer world. So that is the as within, so without. So if she were able to view her inner boundaries, and let's say her inner boundary was a little um, mushy, and she wanted to co-create that and, and add some some way that the negativity did not come into her, so let's say she put a golden light around her boundary that only goodness could come in and love could come in because she still wants it permeable and then the negative state on the outside of her boundary. Then as she went to do meetings with her sister, her relationship with her sister would change. Mm-hmm. And that is that instant changing that can happen. Now, what we're talking about here isn't so much that we find a way to heal the family members because they're the ones that seem to be kind of messed up, if you will, but it's really how we, I guess, experience what that relationship is like and how we can change ourselves in light of what's going on there. And that sort of automatically changes the situation as it is, doesn't it? That absolutely is is, is what you're talking about is a shift in awareness. Mm-hmm. Actually, so that if um, if we have had a incredibly negative event that has happened to us, but we are able to review that situation and see the positive part of it, then that changes our emotional component and the emotions that we have around that particular event, and then that changes the event for us. It just seems sometimes amazing when you consider uh, for even our listeners to think, well, you know, this kind of sounds good, but you don't know what my kind of family is like. But the fact is, is this is a journey that everyone can take. You just have to have the courage to do it and to realize that perhaps maybe it's just not as hard as you think it is. Has that sort of been the experience with you as you work with people over the years? Um, I believe that we all have the capability and and capacity to heal ourselves. So I believe that we are all able to do that. We all have different levels of inner strength and different levels of courage and how to walk through the fear because these issues can bring up fear. There can be a lot of fear around change. But we're all capable of doing that and this is why I really like helpers along the way. If we have a helper, if we have a friend, then it makes some of the darkness become light, and it, and it becomes lighter for us. So that as if we have friends that we have, then we can go forward. It's easier. What has it been like as you work with people over the years? What kinds of shifts could you? I guess, share with our listeners where they can feel very encouraged that this is a journey worth taking. Um, uh, I I guess one of the biggest shifts that I can see is that it, that, um, and some of this came up when I was um, doing research for my book, is that some of the past family therapists have uh, some of their belief system and structures were that if you grew up in a very dysfunctional, highly dysfunctional family, which from dysfunction to healthy is there's a continuum, that uh, these psychotherapists believe that if you grew up in a very dysfunctional family, it was not possible to change that into a, a very healthy family and that patterns were always repeated and that you would always marry your mother or marry your father, that you could never get out of that loop And my belief system is that it is possible to get out of that loop. And part of that is that that awareness step, that just stopping and stopping the the merry-go-round to learn how to get off to make the changes. 
so that I have seen families that where individuals have grown up with high levels of dysfunction and they have created healthiness and happiness for themselves and for their children and their children are now feeling different levels of safety than what the their uh, 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 parents had experienced as children so these these, it is absolutely possible to do this for individuals. Now, I understand that you have a workshop that's coming up here in Portland, Oregon at New Renaissance uh, in the month of July. Tell us about what people can anticipate uh, attending this workshop. So my workshop is called Mending the Dysfunction in the Family. And... Um, Part of what will be going, uh, what they will be exploring, will be um, uh, we will be examining part of the definitions of health and dysfunction, and how to change uh, the dysfunction to health. And then we we'll, we will be exploring the higher self and how to access information from one's higher self. And the higher self is our Inner awareness, our our level of in, it's our intuition level. It's where our creativity resides. And if we have a really strong connection with our higher self, then we know how to go forward to take care of ourselves. And then we also know how to go forward to change what we want in our lives and how to change the intentions that we want. So we will be using some in, uh, visual imagery and we'll be working with some oracle cards and we will take uh, an old dysfunctional pattern that each individual picks from their uh, earlier time. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a childhood dysfunctional pattern. It can be something from adult time, just something that they want to do, use as a jumping off place to learn how to clear their ancestral energy field so that then they can clear their own field. It's just so marvelous to know there's the possibility, as you were saying earlier, it's not so much to change your family. They may just decide to be how they are. But generally when you change how you perceive and experience the world, it sort of changes in kind with you. And it's very encouraging to know that that's very possible, especially for something that can be as dominating and imposing as a family met, if you will. Yes, and... The the image of the net is what um, I started with with my book, which is that the, the idea is that the family is a safety net for us, and we all want to have that family safety net. We and I have thought about that. That image was from the trapeze net that the in the circus where the net catches the trapeze artist, and I think that we all want to go out into the world and take risks and and learn more about ourselves and we do want to have as a backup that net that's there to catch us. And the idea of my workshop is that sometimes the net has tears or rends or holes in it and then you cannot feel the safety because there's a hole there. So if you can go back and mend your personal family net, then you are creating safety for yourself and love for yourself because the net is made out of love. It's pretty amazing how we can take that relationship too and uh, go on and that relationships we have outside of the family tend to uh, be, you know, sort of like, I guess, comfort zones of recreating the same thing you're experiencing. Is that something that you've seen uh, as you've worked with people over the years? What happens is that we take the first relationships that we learn about as children, we take those out into the work world and also with our friends too. So, And, and, and many people that if they take a look around in their uh, working relationships, they can take a look and, and oftentimes in offices see that, oh my goodness, people are just acting out how they were with their sisters and brothers or parents. Yes, we, we, we take those out so that we have mirrors there for ourselves to learn from so that our learning is uh, not just in the family, but it's in the bigger world that we operate into. 
such a fascinating topic to realize, you know, that it's uh, it's funny when you run into people and you get to know them and they talk about, oh, you know, my mother's a wacko or my father was abusive or, you know, I've got an older brother or sister that's dominating and it seems like they've been beat down years ago and then they just kind of continue to do that to themselves every since, you know, as though it's still happening and to realize that you can finally heal and step away from that and move on regardless of whether or not they affect any changes here. And it sounds like a very powerful workshop that you're presenting. It is. And actually one of the interesting side notes that I have found in the workshops is that there's a very interesting um, energy synchronicity that comes up with the individuals that are there. And people don't know each other and they just come in randomly, but it's not that random because life isn't random. We Our lessons come up as we need to learn them and we have individuals come to be our helpers as we call and ask for them. But anyway, people come to these workshops and they talk about little pieces of their lives and and some of the spirit animals that they're able to see. And then when we work with the oracle cards, different people will pull the spirit animals of different people in the group. It's it's that is really cool to me to see. Oh, my goodness. So there's a, a, a different group energy where people are helping each other and they don't even, it, it certainly is not a conscious a- action that happens, but I've just noticed that um, in the in the workshops. Very, very well. Is there a website people can find out more about your work and how to get a hold of the book? My website is www.mendingthenet.com, and my book, Mending the Net, is available on Amazon in either book form or Kindle form. Mm -hmm. And on my website, it lists the various events that I have upcoming, and I also have a blog on my website and a way to contact me. Very good. Kate Boyer, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. And thank you so much, Daniel. And you have a great Fourth of July. Will do, <laughs> <laughs> as we're mending the net. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I thank the listeners out there for tuning in. You can find out more also, if you didn't catch that, by visiting us at beyond50radio.com, the number 50. We also have our exclusive updates. We encourage you to become an exclusive insider with beyond50radio.com. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program, and remember, live your day past halfway.